Hi, my name is Max, and today I'll be talking about our work, Desperate Times Call for Desperate Measures, Towards Risk Adaptive Task Allocation. Heterogeneous robot teams have the potential for solving complex multitask problems such as search and rescue or firefighting. Efficiently solving these multitask problems involve assigning robots to tasks such that their strengths are leveraged. For example, one task might be dousing a flame, which would require a certain amount of water to douse the flame. This problem of assigning robots to tasks efficiently is called the coalition formation problem. The coalition formation problem involves single-task robots, multi-robot tasks, and instantaneous assignment. This means that each robot can only handle one task at a time, each task can be handled by multiple robots, and a robot does not change assignment after it has been assigned. Additionally, we account for uncertainty in agent capabilities. Sources of uncertainty in agent trait include group modeling, where we model agents with slight variation in trait together. This could include robots with slightly different batteries or human variability. Also, a robot's environment can influence its trait expression. For example, bad road conditions could affect how quickly a robot can travel. Here, we are interested in tasks that require a minimum amount of trait. For example, moving an object will require a certain amount of strength without which the object could not be moved. There are several approaches to solving the coalition formation problem. Firstly, there are risk-neutral approaches, which attempt to maximize an expected payoff, but ignore variability in trait. Another set of approaches are called risk-averse, in which worst-case allocations caused by variability in trait are avoided. These methods include conditional variance at risk and mean variance. Most risk-averse approaches require the user to specify a risk tolerance and thus require some a priori knowledge of trait distribution parameters or trait requirement. Risk-averse methods can be used to ensure that the trait required to complete a task are allocated towards that task. Is it better to avoid risk? Yes. Is it always better to avoid risk? Maybe not. A study on the foraging behaviors in birds inspires us to treat risk differently than previous methods. In one experiment, birds had access to two sources of food, one that could consistently meet their needs and another that could exceed their needs but only 50% of the time. In this case, the birds chose the consistent source of food. However, when the consistent source stayed consistent but not sufficient, the birds chose the riskier option. So, desperate times do in fact call for desperate measures, as this behavior minimizes the probability of starving. In our work, this behavior would minimize the probability of failing a task. Now that we have motivated this work, I will discuss our stochastic model of task allocation. Here, we are dealing with S species or types of robots, U traits, and M tasks. Q is an S by U stochastic trait matrix filled with Gaussian random variables that represent the units of each trait for each species. X is an M by S assignment matrix assigning S agents to the M tasks. In other words, it defines how many agents are assigned to each task. Finally, by multiplying X and Q, we get the stochastic aggregated trait matrix describing how much of each aggregated trait is allocated to each of the M tasks. Note that because Q is a matrix of independent Gaussian random variables, each element of Y is a linear combination of Gaussian random variables. To get the means of all the elements in Y, we multiply X by the means of the elements in Q, and to get the variances of the elements of Y, we multiply the variances of Q by the element y square of x. Again, in this work, we are concerned with the probability of satisfying the trait requirements for task m. Ym is a column in y and is a multivariate Gaussian vector. Ym star is a vector of the trait requirements for task m. In other words, Ym is a vector defining how much trait is allocated to task m and ym star is a vector defining how much trait is required to complete task m. With our method, and much like the bird study, we want to avoid risk when possible, but take risk when safer options do not exist.
To do this, we want to find an assignment matrix that maximizes the probability of satisfying the task requirements. With our framework, we can set up an optimization program that maximizes the probability of satisfying task requirements. Instead of maximizing all the task success probabilities at once, we look at the minimum task probability. This avoids disparate and skewed allocations. Let's look at a one-dimensional toy example with two separate allocation possibilities. Shown here are the resultant trait distributions from an allocation Y1 and Y2. Y1 in blue has a larger variance and a lower mean, and Y2 has a smaller variance and a higher mean. In this case, both a risk-neutral and risk-averse allocation algorithm would produce the allocation for Y2. And further, because Y2 has a larger probability of satisfying the trait requirements, our method would also choose Y2. However, if this task were to require more trait indicated by the red dot, the risk-averse and neutral algorithms would still choose the orange allocation, Y2, even though the probability of satisfying requirements is greater in the blue Y1 allocation. Our risk-sensitive method would choose the riskier allocation Y1 in this case. Let us look at another toy example, except this time the risk-averse choice and the risk-neutral choice are not the same. Again, because the risk-neutral choice is just looking at maximizing the expected payoff, it chooses Y1, the blue allocation. Whereas the risk-averse choice, which is looking at both maximizing the expected payoff, but minimizing the worst case scenario, chooses Y2, the orange choice. Our risk sensitive method would choose allocation Y2 because it has a larger probability of satisfying the trait requirements. With our method, we have adaptive regime switching, which tends to reduce variance only if the allocation can meet the requirements, but aims to increase the variance if the requirements cannot be met. Now that I have discussed the theory and motivation behind this work, I will discuss the experiments used to validate our claims. We used two sets of experiments to validate our claims. The first is a numerical simulation testing our method on various trait distributions, team sizes, and task requirements. In the first set of experiments, we can calculate the exact probability of task success using cumulative distribution functions for Gaussian distributions. The second experiment was a simulated multi-robot response using the Robotarium simulator. In this experiment, we have a heterogeneous robot team with a given trait distribution, team size, and task requirement. We sample robots from their trait distributions, assign them to tasks, and simulate the tasks. We then count how many times the tasks succeed and fail. We use three baselines against which we compare our method. The first is a random baseline, where agents are uniformly and randomly allocated to tasks. The second is a risk-neutral baseline, which aims to maximize the expected value of the task trait matrix, Y. And the third baseline is a risk-averse baseline, which aims to maximize the expected trait while considering the worst-case scenario. This consideration of the worst-case scenario is done by regularizing the variance of the task trait matrix. To find allocations for our method and all three baselines, we optimize the assignment using a multi-start global optimization program in MATLAB. While it is possible to use convex optimization to find the risk-averse and neutral allocations, our method cannot be done through convex optimization. Thus, we use MATLAB's global optimization toolbox to find all of the allocations. We use sequential quadratic programming as a local solver and we approximately solve our optimizations in the real numbers because of restrictions in solvers in MATLAB. For the first experiment, we generate 100 different coalition formation problems, each with different trait distribution parameters, number of agents per species, and task requirement. All of our problems have three species, three tasks, and three traits. Each species has a dominant trait for which it has a higher expected value than for its other traits. This is motivated by heterogeneity and robot specialization. Here we report the task probabilities. These are the exact probabilities that each of the task requirements are met over all 300 tasks.
we can see our risk adaptive method in green was able to outperform the baselines at achieving a higher probability of task success across all tasks and trials. Again, these plots show all three tasks across the 100 trials. However, this does not tell the whole story. Here, we report the minimum task probability per coalition formation problem. That is, in one coalition formation problem, the task with the lowest probability of success. We can see in green our method improves on the minimum task probability per trial. These two plots show that our method increases the average and minimum probability of success in a coalition formation problem, and thus can lead to more successful task completion. The next experiment is a simulated emergency response in the Robotarium simulator, where cumulative capability determines task success. In this experiment, we have two tasks, two traits, and two species. The first task involves moving debris, and the second dousing a fire. Robots are of two species, red and blue. The first trait is payload capacity, denoted by the black line. The second trait is water capacity, denoted by the cyan line. In our experiment, species 1 had the dominant trait of payload capacity, and species 2 had the dominant trait of water capacity. Our heterogeneous team has 6 robots from species 1 and 9 robots from species 2. Here is the task requirement matrix, denoting that the debris task required 11 units of payload strength, and the dousing task required 14 units of water capacity. We sample the robot team 10,000 times according to the distributions shown here. We then assign the robots to their teams using the risk adaptive, neutral, sensitive, and random baselines. We then simulate the robot tasks and calculate the success rate. Here is an example run using the risk neutral allocation. We can see that the team on the bottom is moving the debris from left to right. This indicates a task success. However, the team on top does not seem to have enough water to douse the flame. This is a task failure. Here is an example of our method's allocation. You can see that the bottom team is moving the debris from left to right. That's a task success. And the team on the top looks like it has enough water to douse the flames. That is also a task success. Now that we have simulated this robot team 10,000 times, and found the empirical success rates for task 1, task 2, and the combined task 1 and 2 at the same time, we can see that our risk adaptive method in green consistently approved upon the success rate for all the tasks when compared to the baseline algorithms. This means that our method was more consistently able to allocate robots towards tasks such that they were a success and the trait requirements were met. In this work, we introduce a novel framework for risk adaptive task allocation, which seeks to increase the probability that task requirements are met, and outperforms baselines in this regard. This method is applicable when there are trait requirements that must meet a minimum threshold and fail if they are not met. Our method adapts its allocation assignment based on team capability and trait distribution in order to improve the probability that tasks are a success. This means taking risk when safer options do not exist. Additionally, our method does not need to know a priori how much risk the robots should take. It adapts its allocation and only takes as much risk as it needs. In the future, we hope to exploit the inherent structure in the problem in order to improve the optimization that we perform. Additionally, we hope to handle uncertainty in task requirements as well as robot capabilities. Thank you for listening.